Hello everybody, this is Paul Malone from Ideal Fit. I'm here to do a video on using Ideal Forms for Jira to create a very simple form or two. So if you have installed Ideal Forms for Jira and you go to your add-ons, you will see a menu item on the left called Ideal Forms Admin. Selecting that will bring up the administrator for Ideal Forms. This tool is here to help manage forms and organize them around the various use cases that you may have in your environment. The list on the left is a list of form groups which you've identified and the list on the right are all of the forms inside of the system. You can use the filter at the top to quickly find forms by name if you know what they are or on the left you can click any of these form groups to subset the forms for that particular form group. Ideal Forms uses the form group as an organizing tool for forms in a given use case. So for this example, we're going to pretend like we didn't have any form groups and we didn't have any forms. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Add button up here next to Form Groups, and it's going to open up a dialog lets me enter a new form group. And I'll just call it new form group for example. We bind form groups to projects. We need to do this for a number of reasons, but uh, for now I'm just going to go ahead and pick uh, the demo Jira project that I use for demonstrations. The default form of a form group is the form that you create later that will be rendered upon somebody hitting done or close on another form. In other words, the use case needs a default place to go. Change style, I'll come back to later. Anonymous username, anonymous password have to do with allowing anonymous access to the particular use case. And the JIRA decorated is whether or not your form is going to have the JIRA header, footer, and styling of the JIRA system. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we have new form group, for example. If I click checkbox on that, we'll see that we have no forms for this particular form group. If I want to edit this form group, I can click Edit, and it'll bring up the dialog again, and I can make changes to that form group. But I'm not going to now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a form for this new form group. Selecting the Add Form will pop the new dialog. And this dialog is used to give uh, the attributes of the overarching form. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the form group that we just created, new form group for example. I'm going to give it a name, new form name. The type is whether it's going to be an add or an edit form, or if I'm going to be listing issues. In this case, I'm going to use edit. And then I'm going to pick one of the issue types that are derived from the project that I've bound to the form group. And in this case, I have task and subtask. I'm going to go ahead and add task. And then for editing purposes, when we do the form administration, we need to bind this to a specific issue so we can pull the metadata and allow us to uh, graphically create the form that we're going to want. And I think I called my project the demo Jira project, and I know I have an issue one. And then this last question is whether or not we're going to allow anonymous access to this form, and I'm going to say no or false. So doing that, we'll create this new form up here, and I'm now going to edit this by selecting the Design Form button. The Form Designer opens in a new window, new tab, I should say, and on that tab you will see a log in the window itself. And then it will have a dialog. And the dialog are the form settings that we're going to apply for this particular form. And we can see that in the background it has loaded the test issue that we're going to be using to help design our form. There's really two steps for setting up a form, the very you know, minimally two steps. First is you have to set your layout, and then the second you apply fields to that layout. So for now, to keep it simple, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say our form has got so many rows and so many columns. And in our case, I'll just say one row by one column. So it's just one cell. And if I preview it, we'll see that there's nothing in it. 
if I preview the layout, you see that little dot up there indicates that there we have one cell. And now we're going to put something in that cell. I'm going to come, what I've done is I've collapsed form layout. Now I'm going to go to form fields and I'm going to add. By default, it, it appends a row at the bottom of your table. It contains your fields and it adds an HTML type called new source. If I was to preview that, we would actually see it up here with new cell. And if I select that row, I will see the settings on the right hand side for that particular field. So what we're seeing is that in cell 2.1, I've got an HTML control type value of new cell, and I can type in this is my HTML value. Hit preview form, and we will see there is my HTML value. So you can actually do lots of fun stuff with just HTML and laying out your field in your form, um, but we're going to want to add some fields from our issue. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few more rows. So now we have cells 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, and 5, 1. If I preview the form, I see them over here as new cell. I'm going to go to 3, 1, and I'm going to change it. And instead of HTML, I'm going to pick a text box, which is a standard control text box. And I'm going to pick in the data source field, I'm going to pick one of the fields from my issue. So what we're doing is we're binding, we're separating the presentation layer from the data layer. And we're allowing us to pick a control type and then bind it to whatever data field that we have in the issue. In this case, I'm going to pick summary. So we have a text box in 3.1, data source summary. If I preview it, we're going to see, ha, ah, there is my issue right here. This is the data from that issue. And then if I want the description, I can do the same thing. But by picking text area and picking description, and previewing, we see, ah, I've got summary and description with the summary and the description. Now that's nice, but it's not very handy if I can't save them. And unlike JIRA, we don't automatically save when ideal forms. We allow you to put in buttons and enter validations using regular expressions uh, for various fields. So in this last field, I'm going to add control buttons. We call them form buttons. And I'm going to put them in, doesn't matter where, what I have in this field. And now I preview and I've got save, reload, and done. At this point, I have a functional field, or pardon me, functional form. And I can literally come here and type, this is new, and save. It actually just saved that back to the database. And if we go look at that record in the database, we would see that it was changed. So, at this point, everything you've done is done in memory, the memory of the browser that we're looking at this session here. So to actually store this and put it back into the JIRA server so you can then open it uh, directly to this form, you have to hit Save Settings. And what that does is saves back to the server, and now that that is done, I can actually come back to the main form and open this form directly, either by double-clicking it or clicking Open Form. And here we are. This is the form we just created all by itself. I can again save it, change this value, and all of these changes are being saved back to the database. Now back here, if I hit a Reload, we'll see that these are the values that I just saved a second ago. So that's the basics for creating a form group and a single very simple form. I'm going to go ahead and add one more little section now, which is a second form that provides a list of issues that, when clicked, opens up this form that we just created. So to do that, I'm going to come back to our administrator. I'm going to go ahead and add a new form, and I'm going to call it New Form List. I'm going to give it a list identifier. It doesn't need an issue type, but you can pick one, and it doesn't need one of these. So now in my new form list, I'm going to go ahead and open that up into the administrator. Okay, so now that we're administering the list, 
uh, we again have a blank field, blank form, and I need to come in and give it some parameters. So I'm going to give it a one by one grid, and I'm going to come here and I'm going to go ahead and add a field, put in two one, and I'm going to pick field type item list. And as you can imagine, what this is going to do is give me a list of items from the project that I'm looking at. Now the question is, what is the data source? Well, uh, in JIRA, JIRA uses something called JQL, or JIRA Query Language, which it uses in their advanced query. And what we're doing here is using that language to select whatever issues that we want to show. So I'm going to pick Project equals DJP. And then for data reference, we can identify what fields that we want to appear in the list in our main page. So I'm going to pick key and summary. I don't think we can see it quite yet. Oh, we can. So just by putting in project equals DJP and key and summary, what we get are a list of the issues that are in that project. And if I was to expand the summary, we would see that these are the titles that are in the demo project list. Now the rest of these fields have to do with formatting of this table and making it look how you want it to look and how you want it to behave with respect to what happens when you double click on it for select a row. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and jump down to the column widths and I'm going to go ahead and set the first width to be 50 pixels and the second one to be 400. So that'll adjust the widths of these two columns. So this is uh, 50, it's obviously not big enough, let me make it 150, and I'll make this not 400, but uh, 700. So now we have key and summary cruising across most of the page. Now, the other thing I can do is override the titles, so I can make the key field DID and the summary be title. Oops, wrong field column headers, so we have ID and title. So that's how you create a list, and you can get very complex. You can add whatever fields you want, custom fields or non-custom fields, to appear in your lists. And now the question is, well, what do you want to do when somebody selects one of these, one of these items? And the answer is, you use the events. All fields have events. We have on change events, before render event, after render event, and then in this case, we have the table, TB stands for table, double click. So what happens when somebody double clicks on one of these rows? And you can actually run any JavaScript that you want, but we have some uh, baked in things that we want um, to use. And in this case, if I just type in the name of the form that we just created, which was new form name, What will happen when I double click a row on this list is it will open up the form we just created. So I'm going to save that. Now that that's saved back to the database, I can then come back here, subset my use case to the form group that we're working on, and I can double click my list. And that brings up the list that we just created. And then if I double click on any of these rows, it's going to open up the form we created and I can change data. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is that clicking the done does not take us back to the list. And that is because we need to set the default form for the form group. Or actually, you can set a specific form you want to open by going into this form and editing it. But in our case, we're just going to go ahead and come back here to our new form group example. We're going to set the default form to new form list demo. So I'm going to click edit on my form group. I'm going to change default form to new, I see it, form list demo. Say OK. And now that that's set, I should just be able to come back here and hit refresh. Navigate into an item, hit done. Navigate to another item, done, etc. OK, that concludes this video. I know it's been somewhat long. I hope you've learned something. Please feel free to reach out and ask questions or provide comments, and look for more soon.